so the Fed had an emergency meeting yesterday, Monday the 3rd of October. Now we can all guess what was on the menu for this with many central bankers around the world most likely on the phone to Jay Powell over the preceding week with many Forex markets now trading like your favorite altcoin. As we've seen a bit of a meltdown in Forex, Japanese yen, Great British Pound, for example, the pressure is now well and truly on the Fed to make dollars more freely available. That is why we see the big spike in the Dixie, dollar demand is way outstripping the supply right now. So will the Fed pivot soon and what the heck went on during this meeting? Now, in terms of an emergency Fed meeting, this is not all that unusual. There have been up to 15 in the last 12 months non-planned meetings. There are eight planned meetings per year. So this is not too extraordinary. However, it is notable the timing in which this has happened with Credit Suisse fears, with the Bank of England in the UK stepping in and providing quantitative easing once again, actively purchasing bonds. It seems like only a matter of time before the Fed has to pivot and follow suit with Japan and Great Britain, who have already started to intervene. But now with the bulk of rate hikes Done. We are rapidly approaching the terminal rate that the Fed is targeting. While well, it seems that we have max fear in the markets right now, with everyone seemingly very bearish. But the crypto markets have started to take upwards here, but potentially this is a relief rally. We're going to get some capitulation soon, but I do think it is time to really be searching for value in the market right now and having a good nibble. We're seeing top traders starting to DCA and even the likes of Shamath talking about adding to the portfolio here over the next few months as we are seeing deep discounts in many market sectors, crypto just being one of them. So this was the statement issued yesterday by the US Department of the Treasury during the executive session on October 3rd. The council heard presentations from the Fed and the CFTC on global financial market developments, energy markets and US financial vulnerabilities, including some tail risk scenarios for banking organizations. So it does sound like the buyer of last resort, the Fed is yet again being potentially called upon or at least being nudged and told, look, you're going to have to step in at some point here as things are really cracking in global financial markets. And what we do know is when they do intervene, we will see a wall of money enter back into the market. There are so many rich individuals out there looking to allocate once the Fed does pivot, I'm sure we will see quite a bonanza of green across the markets. So this is why you want to start DCAing in earlier, potentially, as I'm going to be doing. Of course, not financial advice. Do your own homework. But during these times of peak fear, I do think that we could potentially see some great opportunities in the market now and over the next few months. So one emergency meeting, maybe not too much to be concerned with, but back in 2020, there were two consecutive emergency Fed meetings. So just to have this on the radar, if we see a second emergency Fed meeting, we know something is really a mess and we could be very close to seeing some major policy being announced. And for those historians out there, Monday, October 19th, 1987 was Black Monday, where the stock market dropped 20% in a single day. If history is to repeat, or maybe just rhyme, maybe we'll see a bit of a bottom at that point for the S&P 500. So all eyes on that date, but let's look at where we are right now. So most recently we had the DXY having a bit of a blow off here. This looks like a local high. Maybe it is not the Pico top here for DXY and it will run a bit further, maybe the end of this year, start of 2023, but it really did put in all the traits of a local market top here. You had the death of the Great British Pound going to like 102 versus the dollar and an array of major Forex markets absolutely bending the knee versus the USD. We saw all the headlines come out that this was essentially the death of every currency versus the dollar and the almighty dollar had all the strength. This typically reminds me of the market Market top of the cycle when everyone expects it to continue going up when we got Bitcoin at 69k 100k was on the table same with DXY we got to about 114 and people were calling for 120 but as you can see after that peak fear in the market we're now having a bit of a slowdown and a retrace here to around 111 as of filming 
Let's look at BTC as well. So Credit Suisse issues, North Korea, emergency meeting, but Bitcoin did not take out the June lows. I do think this is a signal and potentially we're going to need a real black swan event to break those June lows at this point. The bad news is having less of an effect on the crypto markets at this point and primarily Bitcoin. Many altcoins are continuing to sell off, but BTC is showing a bit of strength here. This region as well, obviously the 2017 all-time high region. So, you know, DCAing into maybe a blue chip asset like Bitcoin at this price level seems rather sensible in my opinion, as in a few years time, I'm sure we will look back on this and be like, yes, this was a good time to add some BTC. It could go lower. It could go to 16K, 15, 14, maybe even as low as 12 as many people are calling for. But often when the crowd calls for the same number, we never really get there. But 14, 15K, if that happens, yes, it will be a nasty haircut, but you are averaging in at generational levels, in my opinion. So what might happen from here? So looking at one of the best traders on crypto Twitter, Pentoshi here, he's talking about Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin Bitcoin price action itself here, bottoming out around 18, 19K, grinding along this level. He's expecting a bit of a breakout here or at least some major volatility in the next couple of weeks. But to couple with this, we have Bitcoin dominance that is now starting to trend up once again. This is the weekly time frame, and the level's around 39, 40%. Typically, that is the blow off top for altcoins. And what we need for a market reset, typically in history, which shows us we need Bitcoin dominance to regain some strength once again for the cycle to fully reset. Let's go and look at the daily chart here. So you can see Bitcoin dominance pushing up around 41% here, the third spike into this region over the last few weeks and potentially we could see a bit of a breakout from here now which will mean volatility in the crypto markets so i think altcoins sell off and btc really ramps up its dominance here this of course is just reading the tea leaves we don't know what will happen but trying to make some educated guesses as to the potential movements in the market right now i do think we're going to get some very nice entries on altcoins. If we look at the amount of liquidity in the market here in terms of stablecoin, the overview on DeFi Llama here provides a nice insight. So the red is the market cap of stablecoins. And if this goes down, that means stablecoins are being redeemed for real dollars and exiting the system. But over the last few months, we haven't really seen any downtrend in the amount of stablecoins in crypto. So this means dollars have been sticky, these synthetic dollars in the crypto ecosystem and money is no longer evaporating out of this system. Uh, so we're seeing a stickiness in crypto here. So this means there are crypto native dollars on the sideline waiting to be deployed at some point. And it really is our job at this point to start looking for value in the market. So that's what I wanna talk about next, value in this market. So I've been looking for product market fit. One of the tokens that does have product market fit now is GNS neatly named Gains Network over on Polygon, which allows you to trade derivatives, Forex, crypto, commodities on leverage. So similar to GMX, but encompassing a load of different financial markets over on the Polygon network, seems rather neat. But in terms of value, this one just keeps on pumping. So for me, with all the uncertainty around right now, I wouldn't be allocating to this during a pump. It makes no sense. You wanna wait for a retrace, which will inevitably come at some point. This is the weekly chart. It looks rather bullish, a bit of a cup and handle formation there, but this is not something you really want to buy into with all the uncertainty around. But as we know, everything goes through cycles. And Curve is a DeFi blue chip and is now really fast approaching a level of deep value in my opinion. As we can see, the only times it's really been in this region was back in late November, December of 2020, when everyone said altcoins were dead. Then we had the three hours capitulation event here, which took a load of DeFi tokens to you know historic levels here. And Curve even went all the way down to around 60 cents here. If you go to a wick, around 50 odd. But to breach this yellow line, typically bad things must happen. And so this is where I'm getting at, looking for value in the market. There will be value plays showing themselves all the time now. And it's really important to be engaged in this market. The lows for one token may come in at a different time as another, as each crypto will have its own mini market cycles within wider market cycles. And as you can see from this descending wedge pattern here, 
you know, we are potentially going to enter this deep value territory. And I really think it's worthwhile marking out some areas for altcoins you're into right now and deciding at what area you're going to DCA. Maybe you're gonna put 10% of your allocation into say curve when it goes to 85 cents, maybe a ladder in another 10% when it reaches 80 cents and so on and so forth. But if you don't have a strategy at this point, it's gonna be very hard to actually by the bottom, as I'm sure everyone will be hoping to do exactly the same. So looking for value in the market, it is there to be seen. And I think this is the best way to start to really nibble here as we are at very, very low levels on many, many altcoins. So as North Korea is flying missiles over Japan, Arthur Hayes posts this, curious things going on with the dollar liquidity here, a big jump in dollar liquidity driven by a reduction in reverse repo balances. The Fed did have a meeting today, but no indication what they discussed. Risk assets and green dojis were besties today, silver up 8%, gold retaking 1700, and US Treasury yields were down almost 0.2% at one point today. So he says, what the hell is going on? Even the UN is calling the Fed to stop draining dollar liquidity from the global markets, but we know the Americans don't really care about that. But his spidey senses are tingling. Jay Powell, what is going on? There is definitely something going on in the markets right now. The head honchos at central banks, at the Fed, are all having meetings, and I'm sure the topic of discussion is dollar liquidity. So in maximum fear, I believe this is a good time to start to DCA into the market and really look for value plays. Let's not be buying green candles. You wanna wait for the red days, they will come, but executing a plan is the way to do this. So I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.